Welcome to another video and today I'm gonna explain how to rank up from each rank. There are different type of skills you need to master for different ranks if you want to rank up. So if you are stuck at this moment, this is the video for you my friends. I would definitely recommend to watch even beyond your rank so you know what's to come. Plus at the end of this video there will be a special guest because uh, I never reach Radiant. So he's gonna explain how to reach that beautiful rank. Now sit back, relax and let's talk about the first rank, Iron. If you got placed in Iron you're probably relatively new to the game. When you want to escape this rank you have to focus on only three three things. Aim, movement and map knowledge. Especially aim and movement are the most important factors to escape this rank. And honestly, if you get these two things under control, you could escape Iron without even using abilities. The reason I know that is because I actually taught my girlfriend to play Valorant and she got out of Iron but never used her abilities. So how to practice these? Spike Rush and Deathmatch are your best friend. In Deathmatch you'll get way more duels than normally so you'll train your aim a bit faster. And in Spike Rush you play more different maps so you learn the maps and you practice your movement just like you would do in a normal game. So play some of these modes before you hop into a competitive each day and you immediately also did the warm up, easy peasy. Next up, bronze, how to escape this rank. Once you get comfortable with your aim, movement and map knowledge, it's time to learn the agents better. It's important to know what the abilities of your enemies are, what your own abilities are of course, and how to use them. In iron you could get away by placing your cypher cam on the same spot every round. But now it's time to optimize display a bit, learn different setups, pop flashes and maybe even some lineups, while of course still improving on your movement and aim. There are multiple ways to practice these mechanics you could for example hop into a custom game and just trying some things out or of course watch youtube videos or twitch streams but i see you you're watching a video right now so you're on the good path my friend i'm a strong believer that you could get to silver by just controlling these basics if you want to escape silver however it gets a bit more complicated instead of just learning the core basics it's time to optimize your rounds a bit first of all we have the post plant how do you play that correctly learn the different plant spots know that if you plant in this corner on haven for example the spike is harder to hold in the post plant than if you are planting over here because now you could see the spike from long and from garage. This is just one example of course but every map has do and don'ts when it comes to the post plan. It's also important that you learn how to retake a site correctly. Know that you for example don't need to peek into four people but just going back and then retake with your team. Don't push every round on the defender side. Don't rush B every round on the attacker side. You know what I mean. These changes might sound small but it's the real difference between a bronze player and a silver player. It's not all about A movement and abilities anymore. And on top of this you also need to learn a bit more about the macro play. And with that I mean the economy. Stop buying every round, that's not very smart. Learn how much credit you need to have for each round and optimize your buying habits. If you are struggling with this, I made a full economy guide in only 4 minutes. I will link it down below if you want to watch that after this video if you want to. And once you've done this, congrats, you made it to gold my friend. You now actually belong among the top 50% of Valorant players. This is a pretty decent accomplishment, good job. But we don't want to be in the top 50%, we want to be in the top 1%, right? So how to escape gold? This is the moment where game sense plays a bigger role than before. You could have the best aim in the world, even better than tense, but that doesn't matter if you get shot from behind because you didn't pay attention. I mean, just look how bad my aim was over here and I still got the kill. <laughs> Okay. Sadly, there isn't really a quick way to practice game sense. We have aim laps, but we don't have game sense laps. So to practice this, you just gotta play a lot of competitive games. Another important aspect of getting out of gold is trying to decrease your agent pool. I know it's fun to play a lot of different agents, but if you, for example, only played Fade for like 10 times and you played against the Fade main who played him for over 200 times, the enemy is probably gonna be a bit better than you. Try to learn like 3 agents, a duelist, a controller and a sentinel for example. And then you also need to have the ability to pick your fights wisely in this rank. Don't just peek middle because you can, but peek middle to go for mid control because you saw your teammate smoked mid for example. Staying alive during the rounds is very important. It sounds logical but a lot of people are underestimating that. So pick your fights wisely my friends. With all this knowledge and tons of practice you can make it to platinum. And this is the spot where most people will get stuck. There are multiple reasons for this but one of the main reasons in my opinion is the mindset. Once you reach platinum of course you know the basics right? So you know what's good and what's bad in the game. But because you now have this knowledge you also see the mistakes of your teammates and when you see the mistakes of your teammates you often gonna tilt and just blame it on your team this is also the reason that most people think that high gold and platinum are the most toxic elos to be in so you need to stop focusing on the place of your team and focus more on your own gameplay a lot of players don't want to hear this but it's never your teammates fault if you're not able to rank up yes of course some games you will lose because of your team but in the long term it's not their fault on the other hand you also need to deal with teammates being toxic on you don't beat me Jed! 
So you need to create the right mindset, broskies. But that's not everything. To get out of platinum, teamwork is also so important. In gold and below, for sure, you could get some 1v1 fights easy peasy. But in platinum, you need to start making crossfires and things like that. Like in this round, we knew that the last enemy was in the defender spawn. And in a 4 versus 2, a lot of people will get greedy and push in lower elos. But we didn't do that and went for the crossfire. So if the enemies were to push onto the side, he maybe could kill one of us, but not both of us. One enemy remaining. And of course, where your teammate dies, always try to get a refrag. Don't let them die for nothing. So, easy peasy, you managed to do everything and you're diamond now. What's next? This is the point where consistency starts to be very important. Some games you'll be playing a bit better than other games. But if you want to go from diamond to ascendant, you need to be on your top game every game, my friend. This starts with doing at least a warm-up before you hop into a game. The OG people who follow this channel longer know that I absolutely hate warm-ups. So normally, I don't do them. But during the Road to Ascendant series, if I reach the high diamond ranks, I always do my warm -up. Otherwise, I will just instantly lose the first game every day. And that's not good, my friend. So warm up, very important. Another tip about consistency is that you should never play on tilt. Imagine that you win a game on a day and then lose two games back to back. What a lot of people will do is try to play another game just to get that RR you lost back. But this is not the right mindset. If you're on a lost streak, sometimes it's better to just take a break. Do this for like an hour or maybe the whole day and then start again a bit later. About taking breaks, here's a golden tip for everyone. Once you're done with the game, don't hop into a game immediately after. Take a a break for like five minutes you need to rest your eyes my friends and look at that after a lot of grinding you made it to the ass rank i don't want to be ass how to escape this well it's very simple you just gotta subscribe to the channel just kidding of course my friend but if you like this video i really would appreciate that one day we might grow bigger than the ultimate goal funny and cute kitten cat one day baby but anyway how to escape ascendant this might sound a bit strange but this is the point where you have to stop playing casually the goal of a lot of people is to reach ascendant and once they reach that point they're most likely gonna backseat game but this is where in my opinion the difference between an ascendant player and an immortal player comes in someone who wants to get to immortal is playing serious every game for example if there's no clear shot color it's time to stand up and call the strategies yourself the people who want to reach immortal are doing a dedicated warm-up before the first game of the day and no one dead match is not a dedicated warm-up that's what i'm usually doing though and most of all people who want to get to immortal are not playing only like two games each week they are on the grind my friends multiple games a day and eventually they will hit their beautiful goal of immortal and this is where my story ends. I never got past Immortal. You have to realize that when you get Immortal, you are among the top 1% of players. And the Radiant players are among the top 0.03% of all players. That's just insane. So I called in a friend to explain what's the real difference between an Immortal player and a Radiant player. This guy got all the way to Immortal 2 with only a frenzy. I'm of course talking about Dr. Freeze. He knows his stuff. What's the difference between a real Immortal player and a real Radiant player? I wrote down four things because I knew we were doing this. So like, team play communication consistency and quicker to using util and like doing reactive plays the way that they play off of each other flashing and then using all their util at the right time like it's just perfectly played does that make sense what i'm hearing optimizing team play that, that's one big yeah, uh, pretty much, part. yeah i think dr freeze explains it perfectly if you want to escape immortal you have to do everything i mentioned before in this video and then optimize it to the max team play communication playing off each other utility everything is optimized and everything is consistent so yeah big respect for all the radio players out there i hope this video was helpful shout out to dr freeze if you want to see some immortal frenzy plays you could find this channel with the link in the description and i see you guys in the next one peace